Angel, Wikipedia article audio. An angel is generally a supernatural being found in various religions and mythologies. In Abrahamic religions and Zoroastrianism, Angels are often depicted as benevolent celestial beings who act as intermediaries between God or heaven and earth. Other roles of angels include protecting and guiding human beings, and carrying out God's tasks. Within Abrahamic religions, angels are often organized into hierarchies, although such rankings may vary between sects in each religion, and are given specific names or titles such as Gabriel or Destroying Angel. The term angel has also been expanded to various notions of spirits or figures found in other religious traditions. The theological study of angels is known as angelology. In fine art, angels are usually depicted as having the shape of human beings of extraordinary beauty, they are often identified using the symbols of bird wings, halos, and light. Etymology Zoroastrianism The word angel in English is a blend of Old English angle and Old French angeli. Both derive from late Latin angelus messenger, which in turn was borrowed from late Greek a 1 4 i superscript 3 i superscript 3 i i i i agelos commonly transliterated by non-Greek speakers in its phonetic form Angelos. According to R.S.P. Beeks, Angelos itself may be an oriental loan, like a 1 4 i superscript 3 i superscript 3 i plus or minus i i i dot. The word's earliest form is Mycenaean akro, attested in linear B syllabic script. The Angelos is the Septuagint's default translation of the Biblical Hebrew term male euro trademark akh, denoting simply messenger without specifying its nature. In the Latin Vulgate, the meaning becomes bifurcated, when male euro trademark akh or Angelos is supposed to denote a human messenger, words like nuntius or legatus are applied. If the word refers to some supernatural being, the word Angelus appears. Such differentiation has been taken over by later vernacular translations of the Bible, early Christian and Jewish exegetes and eventually modern scholars. In Zoroastrianism there are different angel-like figures. For example, each person has one guardian angel, called Fravashi. They patronize human beings and other creatures, and also manifest God's energy. The Amish Spentas have often been regarded as angels, although there is no direct reference to them conveying messages, but are rather emanations of Ahuram Mazda, they initially appeared in an abstract fashion and then later became personalized, associated with diverse aspects of the divine creation. In the commentaries of Proclus on the Timaeus of Plato, Proclus uses the terminology of angelic and angel in relation to metaphysical beings. According to Aristotle, just as there is a first mover, so, too, must there be spiritual secondary movers. The Torah uses the terms times times oe times 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 oe times times trademark times 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 oe times 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 trademark times 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 trademark times times oe times times trademark times and times 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 copyright times trademark times to refer to beings traditionally interpreted as angels later texts use other terms such as times times sent times oe times trademark times 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 trademark times. Neoplatonism The term times times oe times times is also used in other books of the Tanakh. Depending on the context, the Hebrew word may refer to a human messenger or to a supernatural messenger. A human messenger might be a prophet or priest such as Malachi, my messenger, 
the Greek superscription in the Septuagint translation states the book of Malachi was written by the hand of his messenger a one-fourth euro I superscript three I superscript three I I I I, Anga copyright LU. Examples of a supernatural messenger are the Malak Yahweh, who is either a messenger from God, an aspect of God, or God himself as the messenger. Scholar Michael D. Coogan notes that it is only in the late books that the terms come to mean the benevolent semi-divine beings familiar from later mythology and art. Daniel is the first biblical figure to refer to individual angels by name, mentioning Gabriel in Daniel 9.21 and Michael in Daniel 10.13. These angels are part of Daniel's apocalyptic visions and are an important part of all apocalyptic literature. Abrahamic Religions In Daniel 7, Daniel receives a dream vision from God. As Daniel watches, the Ancient of Days takes his seat on the throne of heaven and sits in judgment in the midst of the heavenly court and like a son of man approaches the Ancient One in the clouds of heaven and is given everlasting kingship. Coogan explains the development of this concept of angels, in the post-exilic period, with the development of explicit monotheism. These divine beings a euro the sons of God who were members of the divine council a euro were in effect demoted to what are now known as angels, understood as beings created by God, but immortal and thus superior to humans. This conception of angels is best understood in contrast to demons and is often thought to be influenced by the ancient Persian religious tradition of Zoroastrianism which viewed the world as a battleground between forces of good and forces of evil, between light and darkness. One of these is Ha'aaa superscript 1an, a figure depicted in the Book of Job. Philo of Alexandria identifies the angel with the Logos in as much as the angel is the immaterial voice of God. The angel is something different from God himself but is conceived as God's instrument. Judaism In post-biblical Judaism, certain angels took on particular significance and developed unique personalities and roles. Although these archangels were believed to rank among the heavenly host, no systematic hierarchy ever developed. Metatron is considered one of the highest of the angels in Merkaba and Kabbalist mysticism and often serves as a scribe, he is briefly mentioned in the Talmud and figures prominently in Merkaba mystical texts. Michael, who serves as a warrior and advocate for Israel, is looked upon particularly fondly. Gabriel is mentioned in the Book of Daniel and briefly in the Talmud as well as in many Merkaba mystical texts. There is no evidence in Judaism for the worship of angels, but there is evidence for the invocation and sometimes even conjuration of angels. Jewish Angelic Hierarchy According to Kabbalah, there are four worlds and our world is the last world, the world of action. Angels exist in the worlds above as a task of God. They are an extension of God to produce effects in this world. After an angel has completed its task, it ceases to exist. The angel is in effect the task. This is derived from the book of Genesis when Abraham meets with three angels and Lot meets with two. The task of one of the angels was to inform Abraham of his coming child. The other two were to save Lot and to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Individual Angels Jewish philosopher Maimonides explained his view of angels in his Guide for the Perplexed 2 4 and 2. This leads Aristotle in turn to the demonstrated fact that God, glory, and majesty to him, does not do things by direct contact. God burns things by means of fire. Fire is moved by the motion of the sphere, the sphere is moved by means of a disembodied intellect, these intellects being the angels which are near to him, 
through whose mediation the spheres move, thus totally disembodied minds exist which emanate from God and are the intermediaries between God and all the bodies here in this world. Christianity Maimonides had a Neo-Aristotelian interpretation of the Bible. Maimonides writes that to the wise man, one sees that what the Bible and Talmud refer to as angels are actually allusions to the various laws of nature, they are the principles by which the physical universe operates. For all forces are angels. How blind, how perniciously blind are the naive! If you told someone who purports to be a sage of Israel that the deity sends an angel who enters a woman's womb and there forms an embryo, he would think this a miracle and accept it as a mark of the majesty and power of the deity, despite the fact that he believes an angel to be a body of fire one-third the size of the entire world. All this, he thinks, is possible for God. But if you tell him that God placed in the sperm the power of forming and demarcating these organs, and that this is the angel, or that all forms are produced by the active intellect, that here is the angel, the vice-regent of the world constantly mentioned by the sages, then he will recoil a euro guide for the perplexed two for. Maimonides, in his Yad HaChazaka, Yesodei HaTorah, counts ten ranks of angels in the Jewish angelic hierarchy, beginning from the highest. From the Jewish Encyclopedia, Entry Angelology Interaction with Angels Later Christians inherited Jewish understandings of angels, which in turn may have been partly inherited from the Egyptians. In the early stage, the Christian concept of an angel characterized the angel as a messenger of God. Later came identification of individual angelic messengers, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, and Uriel. Then, in the space of little more than two centuries the image of angels took on definite characteristics both in theology and in art. The New Church According to St. Augustine, angel is the name of their office, not of their nature. If you seek the name of their nature, it is spirit, if you seek the name of their office, it is angel, from what they are, spirit, from what they do, angel. Basilian Father Thomas Rosica says, angels are very important, because they provide people with an articulation of the conviction that God is intimately involved in human life. Michael, kindness of God, and stands up for the children of mankind, Gabriel, performs acts of justice and power. By the late 4th century, the Church Fathers agreed that there were different categories of angels, with appropriate missions and activities assigned to them. There was, however, some disagreement regarding the nature of angels. Some argued that angels had physical bodies, while some maintained that they were entirely spiritual. Some theologians had proposed that angels were not divine but on the level of immaterial beings subordinate to the Trinity. The resolution of this Trinitarian dispute included the development of doctrine about angels. The angels are represented throughout the Christian Bible as spiritual beings intermediate between God and men, you have made him a little less than the angels. The Bible describes the function of angels as messengers but does not indicate when the creation of angels occurred. Christians believe that angels are created beings, based on, praise ye him, all his angels, praise ye him, all his hosts for he spoke and they were made. He commanded and they were created. The Forty Gospel Homilies by Pope Gregory I noted angels and archangels. The Fourth Lateran Council declared that the angels were created beings. The Council's decree firm iter cred imus declared both that angels were created and that men were created after them. 
The First Vatican Council repeated this declaration in Dei Filius, the dogmatic constitution on the Catholic faith. Jophiel expelled Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden holding a flaming sword and punishes those who transgress against God, Raphael, God's healing force, Uriel, leads us to destiny, Samael. Angel of Death A Euro see also Malak Hamaves, Sand Alphan, battles Samael and brings mankind together. Thomas Aquinas relates angels to Aristotle's metaphysics in his Summa Contra Gentiles, Summa Theologica, and in De Substantius Sepa Atis, a treatise on angelology. Although angels have greater knowledge than men, they are not omniscient as Matthew 24.36 points out. Latter-day Saints Islam Baha'i Faith Sikhism The New Testament includes many interactions and conversations between angels and humans. For instance, three separate cases of angelic interaction deal with the births of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. In Luke 1.11, an angel appears to Zechariah to inform him that he will have a child despite his old age, thus proclaiming the birth of John the Baptist. In Luke 1.26 the archangel Gabriel visits the Virgin Mary in the Annunciation to foretell the birth of Jesus Christ. Angels then proclaim the birth of Jesus in the Adoration of the Shepherds in Luke 2.10. Jibrael the Archangel Gabriel is an archangel who serves as a messenger from God, Michael, or Mikhail, the angel of nature, Israfil, is the angel of the trumpet in Islam, though unnamed in the Quran. Along with Mikhail, Jibrael, and Israel, he is one of the four Islamic archangels. Israfil will blow the trumpet from a holy rock in Jerusalem to announce the day of resurrection. The trumpet is constantly poised at his lips, ready to be blown when God so orders, Azrael is Azrael superscript 1 superscript 2 plus or minus or Israel, the angel of death, takes the soul of the deceased away from the body. In Quran only referenced as angel of death or you, you you you, you dot, darda il. The angels who travel in the earth searching out assemblies where people remember God's name, Kiram and Katiban, the two angels who record a person's good and bad deeds, Mu'aktibat, a class of guardian angels who keep people from death until their decreed time, Munker and Nakir, the angels who test the faith of the dead in their graves. They ask the soul of the dead person questions. If the person fails the questions, the angels make the man suffer until the day of judgment. If the soul passes the questions, he will have a pleasant time in the grave until the day of judgment, Ridwan, the angel in charge of maintaining Jana or Paradise, Marlik, the angel who keeps or guards Hellfire, Harut and Marut are two angels mentioned in the second surah of the Quran who were sent down to test the people at Babel or Babylon by performing deeds of magic. The Quran indicates that although they warned the Babylonians not to imitate them or do as they were doing, some members of their audience failed to obey and became sorcerers, thus damning their own souls. According to Matthew 4.11, after Jesus spent forty days in the desert, the devil left him and, behold, angels came and ministered to him. In Luke 22:43, an angel comforts Jesus Christ during the agony in the garden. In Matthew 28:5, an angel speaks at the empty tomb, following the resurrection of Jesus and the rolling back of the stone by angels. In 1851 Pope Pius IX approved the chaplet of St. Michael based on the 1751 reported private revelation from Archangel Michael to the Carmelite nun Antonia Diastonic.
in a biography of St. Gemma Galgani written by Venerable Germanus Ruo Polo, Galgani stated that she had spoken with her guardian angel. Pope John Paul II emphasized the role of angels in Catholic teachings in his 1986 address titled Angels Participate in History of Salvation, in which he suggested that modern mentality should come to see the importance of angels. According to the Vatican's Congregation for Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments, the practice of assigning names to the holy angels should be discouraged, except in the cases of Gabriel, Raphael and Michael whose names are contained in Holy Scripture. In the New Church, extensive information is provided concerning angels and the spiritual world in which they dwell from many years of spiritual experiences recounted in the writings of Emanuel Swedenborg. All angels are in human form with a spiritual body, and are not just minds without form. There are different orders of angels according to the three heavens, and each angel dwells in one of innumerable societies of angels. Such a society of angels can appear as one angel as a whole. All angels originate from the human race, and there is not one angel in heaven who first did not live in a material body. Moreover, all children who die not only enter heaven but eventually become angels. The life of angels is that of usefulness, and their functions are so many that they cannot be enumerated. However each angel will enter a service according to the use that they had performed in their earthly life. Names of angels, such as Michael, Gabriel and Raphael, signify a particular angelic function rather than an individual being. Esotericism While living in one's body an individual has conjunction with heaven through the angels, and with each person, there are at least two evil spirits and two angels. Temptation or pains of conscience originates from a conflict between evil spirits and angels. Due to man's sinful nature it is dangerous to have open direct communication with angels and can only be seen when one's spiritual sight has been opened. Thus from moment to moment angels attempt to lead each person to what is good tacitly using the person's own thoughts. Adherents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints view angels as the messengers of God. They are sent to mankind to deliver messages minister to humanity, teach doctrines of salvation, call mankind to repentance, give priesthood keys, save individuals in perilous times, and guide humankind. Latter-day Saints believe that angels either are the spirits of humans who are deceased or who have yet to be born, or are humans who have been resurrected or translated and have physical bodies of flesh and bones and accordingly Joseph Smith taught that there are no angels who minister to this earth but those that do belong or have belonged to it. As such, Latter-day Saints also believe that Adam, the first man, was and is now the Archangel Michael, and that Gabriel lived on the earth as Noah. Likewise the angel Moroni first lived in a pre-Columbian American civilization as the 5th century prophet warrior named Moroni. Hermetic Kabbalah Theosophy Brahma Kumaris Joseph Smith, Jr. described his first angelic encounter thus, While I was thus in the act of calling upon God, I discovered a light appearing in my room, which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noonday, when immediately a personage appeared at my bedside standing in the air, for his feet did not touch the floor. He had on a loose robe of most exquisite whiteness. It was a whiteness beyond anything earthly I had ever seen, nor do I believe that any earthly thing could be made to appear so exceedingly white and brilliant. Not only was his robe exceedingly white, but his whole person was glorious beyond description, and his countenance truly like lightning. The room was exceedingly light, 
but not so very bright as immediately around his person. When I first looked upon him, I was afraid, but the fear soon left me. Most angelic visitations in the early Latter-day Saint movement were witnessed by Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery, who both claimed to have been visited by the prophet Moroni, John the Baptist, and the apostles Peter, James, and John. Later, after the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, Smith and Cowdery claimed to have been visited by Jesus, and subsequently by Moses, Elias, and Elijah. In Art People who claim to have received a visit by an angel include the other two of the three witnesses, David Whitmer and Martin Harris. Many other Latter-day Saints, both in the early and modern church, have claimed to have seen angels, though Smith posited that, except in extenuating circumstances such as the Restoration, mortals teach mortals, spirits teach spirits, and resurrected beings teach other resurrected beings. Angels are mentioned many times in the Quran and Hadith. Islam is clear on the nature of angels in that they are messengers of God. They are entrusted with various tasks by God and only follow His instructions. An example of a task they carry out is that of testing individuals by granting them abundant wealth and curing their illness. Believing in angels is one of the six articles of faith in Islam. Some examples of angels in Islam In his book of Certitude Baha Ullah, founder of the Baha'i Faith, describes angels as people who have consumed, with the fire of the love of God, all human traits and limitations, and have clothed themselves with angelic attributes and have become endowed with the attributes of the spiritual. Abdu'l Baha describes angels as the confirmations of God and his celestial powers and as blessed beings who have severed all ties with this nether world and been released from the chains of self, and revealers of God's abounding grace. The Baha'i writings also refer to the concourse on high an angelic host, and the maid of heaven of Baha Ullah's vision. The poetry of the holy scripture of the Sikhs Ayuro the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ayuro figuratively mentions a messenger or angel of death, sometimes as Yam and sometimes as Azrael. In a similar vein, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib talks of a figurative Chitar and Gyupat. However, Sikhism has never had a literal system of angels, preferring guidance without explicit appeal to supernatural orders or beings. According to the Kabbalah as described by the Golden Dawn there are ten archangels, each commanding one of the choir of angels and corresponding to one of the Sephirot. It is similar to the Jewish angelic hierarchy. In the teachings of the Theosophical Society, Devas are regarded as living either in the atmospheres of the planets of the solar system or inside the sun and they help to guide the operation of the processes of nature such as the process of evolution and the growth of plants, their appearance is reputedly like colored flames about the size of a human. It is believed by theosophists that Devas can be observed when the third eye is activated. Some Devas originally incarnated as human beings. It is believed by theosophists that nature spirits, elementals, and fairies can be also be observed when the third eye is activated. It is maintained by theosophists that these less evolutionarily developed beings have never been previously incarnated as humans, they are regarded as being on a separate line of spiritual evolution called the Deva evolution. Eventually, as their souls advance as they reincarnate, it is believed they will incarnate as Devas. It is asserted by theosophists that all of the above-mentioned beings possess etheric bodies that are composed of etheric matter, a type of matter finer and more pure that is composed of smaller particles than ordinary physical plane matter.
The Brahma Kumaris uses the term angel to refer to a perfect, or complete state of the human being, which they believe can be attained through a connection with God. In an address during a general audience of August 6, 1986, entitled Angels Participate in the History of Salvation, Pope John Paul II explained that he angels have no body. Angels are however often depicted in painting and sculpture as male humans. Christian art perhaps reflects the descriptions in Revelation 4,6 a Euro 8 of the four living creatures and the descriptions in the Hebrew Bible of cherubim and seraphim. However, while cherubim and seraphim have wings in the Bible, no angel is mentioned as having wings. The earliest known Christian image of an Angela Euro in the Cubicolo dell'Annunziazione in the Catacomb of Priscilla a Euro is without wings. In that same period, representations of angels on sarcophagi, lamps, and reliquaries also show them without wings, as for example the angel in the sacrifice of Isaac seen in the sarcophagus of Junius Bassus. The earliest known representation of angels with wings is on the Prince's sarcophagus, attributed to the time of Theodosius I, discovered at Sarga 1 4th Zell, near Istanbul, in the 1930s. From that period on, Christian art has represented angels mostly with wings, as in the cycle of mosaics in the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Four and six winged angels, drawn from the higher grades of angels and often showing only their faces and wings, are derived from Persian art and are usually shown only in heavenly contexts, as opposed to performing tasks on earth. They often appear in the pendentives of church domes or semi-domes. Prior to the Judeo-Christian tradition, in the Greek world the goddess Nike and the gods Eros and Thanatos were also depicted in human-like form with wings. Saint John Chrysostom explained the significance of angels' wings. They manifest a nature's sublimity. That is why Gabriel is represented with wings. Not that angels have wings but that you may know that they leave the heights and the most elevated dwelling to approach human nature. Accordingly, the wings attributed to these powers have no other meaning than to indicate the sublimity of their nature. Angels are typically depicted in Mormon art as having no wings based on a quote from Joseph Smith. In terms of their clothing, angels, especially the Archangel Michael, were depicted as military-style agents of God and came to be shown wearing late antique military uniform. This uniform could be the normal military dress, with the tunic to about the knees, an armor breastplate and tarragis, but was often the specific dress of the bodyguard of the Byzantine emperor, with the long tunic and the loros, the long gold and jeweled pallium restricted to the imperial family and their closest guards. The basic military dress was shown in Western art into the Baroque period and beyond, and up to the present day in Eastern Orthodox icons. Other angels came to be conventionally depicted in long robes, and in the later Middle Ages they often wear the vestments of a deacon, a cope over a dalmatic. This costume was used especially for Gabriel in Annunciation Cenus a Euro for example the Annunciation in Washington by Jan van Eyck. Some types of angels are described as possessing more unusual or frightening attributes, such as the fiery bodies of the seraphim, and the wheel-like structures of the ophanim.